Fox News alert now. While most of the country's attention is on the coronavirus uh, pandemic that we're in the middle of, the Defense Department is working hard to keep our nation safe from other adversaries. NORAD intercepting Russian aircraft overnight after entering the Alaskan Air Defense Identification Zone. Did not know this when I got up this morning. That mission was under the command of four-star general Terrence O'Shaughnessy, and he joins us right now. General, what can you tell us about this? Well, we're ready 24-7, 365, even during the COVID crisis. And we had uh, two IL-38s. Uh, there was a, a Russian uh, maritime patrol aircraft come up the Bering Strait. We launched F-22s, a KC-135 tanker, and AWACS, which is our command and control aircraft. Uh, and we intercepted them in our air defense ad identification zone, uh, escorted them in. They ended up about uh, 50, 60 miles off of ADAC. Uh, but we're ready all the time, 24-7, 365. And that's part of our mission assurance uh, ensuring that even this COVID-19 crisis, our crews are ready, our command and control is ready. It doesn't matter uh, where, where it is, we're going to be able to defend our great country. So listen, uh, we know that they're dealing with the coronavirus too. They don't want to tell us exactly how bad that situation is. But what, do you think, what are they up to? Why would they go ahead and take that risk of breaching our airspace? Well, I think what they do is they just uh, wanted to see what, if we'd be able to react. Are we prepared? Are we uh, impacted by the virus? Or do we have any vulnerabilities? Uh, about three weeks ago, they did it as well. Uh, when we were doing an ISEX with our submarines, they sent some aircraft over them. We were able to intercept them then as well. Uh, so we don't have any vulnerabilities. We're prepared. Uh, we're postured. We made sure that they do that. So tell us about the USNS Comfort. How many patients are you able to have? How are you interacting uh, from New York Harbor to the Javits Center to the area hospitals in the epicenter of this crisis? Well, I'll tell you, Brian, our, our, our three-prong attack approach here is really working out well. Uh, we have the comfort for our high-end care. We have the Javits Center for that medium, well-end care. Uh, and then we've also pushed uh, doctors forward. So I'll give you a quick uh, example of that, of how closely tied in we are to the system. Uh, yesterday, we had a call come out that uh, one of the hospitals had a problem with their oxygen system. They had 18 patients that were on oxygen, on ventilators, on IVs, and they needed uh, quick assistance to bring them somewhere else. We were able to take 37 of our docs and nurses, put them into a convoy of 10 ambulances. They went and picked up those patients. They brought 10 of them right to the comfort, uh, eight of them to other hospitals. Uh, but just our ability to be able to respond rapidly, have the right PPE on, right? We had to have the right gear because these are COVID-19 patients. Able to respond so quickly, uh, save lives. Wow, that's great. So you got about, you about 50 on the ship. Uh, just uh, under 150 at the Javits Center. With the number of hospitalizations going down, do you think your numbers will go down or up? Well, I think uh, you know, we hope that they'll go down. Or, as you mentioned, you know, we have 60 right now in the comfort, 172 in the Javits Center. It, in our uh, perfect world, we're actually going to decrease that, but we're ready if it's not. And then we're going to leapfrog it to other areas. We, we have a, a capability going into New Jersey. Connecticut, Massachusetts, there's other areas in our nation that are going to need this capability. So as soon as New York plateaus off, if we're not needed there, then we're going to bring that capability where it's needed across our nation. General, i got to ask you, there's a story in the London Times uh, that if something was to be incapacitated with the president and vice president, whether it's something that's happened with Boris Johnson where he's got to go to the ICU, that you would take over. Uh, is that true? Uh, no, I think those stories were exaggerated. We have our uh, elected officials have a great plan. Now, what we are part of is we make sure uh, for continuity of government, we make sure that the folks get to the right place at the right time. We are provide the protection for them. Uh, we make sure we never get to that, that situation. But uh, we are part of the continuity of government, but uh, not in the sense that you described. Wow, uh, it's hard to imagine somebody with a, a plate as full as yours and with res as much responsibilities on your shoulders. General, thanks so much for the time uh, to, that you gave us and, and our viewers. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brian, and uh, best wishes to all the folks out there, those health care workers. Uh, they need, they need uh, America to know that, uh, that, that we're behind them. They're, the, they're on the front line, and we're right behind them. And you're surging medical professionals into the hospitals as well as bringing them to our facilities. Thanks so much, General, uh, and uh, best to everybody working for us uh, wearing the camouflage.